Like Haley mentioned, weather is such an incredible event. It Last time we checked in with her, it was sunny. Well, and the difference between the flooding event that's taking place up there in the Kingwood area and flooding events that we've seen in the past, the majority of the water that's affecting the West Fork of the San Jacinto River is coming from Spring Cypress Creek because right. Spring Cypress Creek is out of its banks. And this weather system causing a lot of problems right now for a lot of folks, especially is. out in West Harris County. That's right. That's where we find meteorologist Justin Stapleton. He's been reporting for us all day. And it wasn't, again, raining where he was a short while ago when we checked in with him. But Justin, Looks like it's coming down pretty hard out there. Oh, yeah, guys. You know, almost on cue, similar to what Brandon was dealing with, and it sounded like from my, uh, what I could hear in my ear here of what uh, Haley was dealing with, too. Uh, the thunderstorms, that line of thunderstorms that Britta told you about, is right here on top of us. Now, we are right inside the western edge of the Bear Creek Village. So that includes places like Mill Hollow Road, which we're on right now. And in fact, this is the one that I told you about that we've been monitoring here. In fact, I just spoke with a couple of the homeowners, including the one just off to my right and a couple of the homeowners off to my left here. And they sort of looked at us when they heard that first rumble of thunder. And I believe one of them actually looked at me and said, really? Really? Like, this is what we need at this point. Now, obviously, as Britta mentioned, we're not going to necessarily see an enormous amount of rain, but it's coming down at a pretty good clip right now. And kind of coming in sideways if you can sort of see the video there and you know I'll kind of guide where the wind is uh, based on my umbrella. Big problems here are still going to be the flood concerns. Right now as you get closer to uh, the sidewalk where the sidewalk meets the driveways and the side of the road that's where we're looking at the heaviest water so far, deepest water I should say, anywhere from uh, I'd say about maybe seven eight inches to where I'm standing here, this is probably halfway up my calf, so about a foot. Even further down the road there, as you get closer to the cul-de-sac, that's where it's about two to three feet, especially the last batch of houses on the left and right there. That's where the biggest trouble spot is. Interestingly enough, we've talked to a number of neighbors here, guys, and they all say that behind us there is actually a water treatment plant and that some of the fencing behind this neighborhood here has been blocked off at times by the company and that's one of the reasons why the water spills into this neighborhood because there's a drainage ditch behind there which we checked out earlier this morning and it's there but it too is full now again is that a function of the 18 inches of rain you know hard to tell at this point uh, but it's something that I know a lot of the neighbors here say they're concerned with and they certainly want to make sure that if that's the case then they can find a way to get the rain and all of the flood water here to drain out of their neighborhood but certainly this is not adding uh, <laughs> kind of adding insult to injury is probably the best way to put it at this point uh, very rough go for a lot of folks here you can see they've got debris that they've been pulling out of their house Anything from furniture, the gentleman just to my right here, the uh, house just to my right, off to my right shoulder, has actually been ripping the flooring out because he said he got about six inches of standing water. And on all the houses, you can see where the water line is. Uh, it sort of changes the color of the brick. And if you go to my uh, Facebook page, uh, we put up a video earlier this morning of one of the gentlemen that was kind enough to let us tape his house and you see where that water line is it, it is real easy to spot on all of these houses here so that's the main concern here so far Andy and Anusha is not only just what do we do with all of the water that I'm standing in that isn't moving right now but how much more water is going to fall not only from the thunderstorms but also as you guys mentioned the uh, potential for the flood warning that's still out there for the Attics Reservoir that right now is at about 102 feet. We were just over at Highway 6 in the closure between I-10 and uh, Clay Road there. And I can tell you that it's real hard to determine where the road starts and where the reservoir starts. They all kind of mesh into one at this point, And that's really, really messy. One of the spots that probably is going to take quite a while uh, for it to clear. So again, we'll continue to monitor things here across Bear Creek Village. Uh, we have seen a little bit of light traffic going in and out, and in fact, uh, we've got an uh, individual here that's uh, going to try to get into their home, so I'm going to step out of the way and give her an opportunity to try to get the car in. So as you could tell, some of the higher profile vehicles, she's driving a Dodge Durango there, you know, they can get through, and what we've noticed is, is that the middle of the road here 
is actually not too bad. It's about, I'd say, upwards of maybe two, three inches of water, but the road itself is sloped. And so as you go a little further, closer to where the sidewalk meets, you can see the water gets a whole lot higher at that point. Anyway, that's what we've got here so far. Looks like the rain's letting up just a bit. Hopefully this will be the last of it as it moves its way through. Otherwise, we'll continue to monitor things here in Bear Creek Village. Justin Stapleton, KPRC Channel 2 News. And